Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extension tutorial. Now this tutorial should have come out a long time ago on how to use ZXP Sign CMD to sign your extension files. A super basic task to prepare your extension files for any installer or ZXP. And this basically ensures that your files are trusted and attached to a certificate that is trusted upon other computers. Now, three years later into creating my first certificate, basically, of course, before we get started, make sure you check out the links down below to follow us, uh, join the Discord, follow us on YouTube, subscribe, hit the like button, all the usual stuff. But we're going to hop right into this main tutorial and talk about my mistake I made after three years of my first uh, certificate that I created. So I've made many basic extension tutorials in the past where I basically discuss the ins and outs of creating an extension from scratch all the way to delivering it to the users. And part of that process is signing your extension. This is all covered quite well in the Adobe CEP CEP resources GitHub where you have access to all these CEP libraries uh, ZXP Sign CMD and documentation that you need. And the ZXP Sign CMD is basically what you do to attach a trusted certificate, a digital certificate, to all of your extension files before you send it off to people and their antivirus software goes crazy. It also protects the integrity of the structure of your extension so that if any files are changed, modified, moved, renamed, uh, it will break your extension because it has to be in the exact configuration from the point at which you sign it. Now normally to sign an extension, we simply type in VXP sign CMD. That's the name of our application that we used to sign it. Then we use the sign flag because we're going to sign some files. You can also verify after the fact, uh, but today we're in the business of signing. And what are we going to sign? I have a folder called com.extension.testing and the output file of this signing process can be my extension test. 01 and this can be either a zxp if you want to just deliver that as a file or it can be a zip depending on what your purposes are usually if you're using a native installer using inno setup or packages you want to use a zip so you can quickly unzip it and get it packaged up in another program or if you're just distributing the zxp you can just use the zxp after that you type in the name of your certificate or the path to your p12 certificate in my case i have my certificate here that i just renewed and this is uh next of course i'm going to blur this out because it is my password for my certificate so you just type in your password and go on to the next field obviously once again i'm not going to show you that because it is my password um now usually this would be the entire process I would take. And this is what I taught in my tutorials. What this does is it takes your files in your com.extension testing folder, puts them into a ZXP format, which is basically just a zip format, which is more easily installed as an extension. And then it attaches your certificates with your password, given that it's correct, and creates an exported file that can be trusted. This works perfectly fine as long as your certificate is valid. But me, I purchased my first certificate in 2019 and purchased a three-year certificate. And my actual certificate itself expired just a few days ago. Although I have moved since that point and had to get a new certificate all figured out, I had one huge mistake that messed up all of the applications I ever signed with the certificate over a three-year period. I started receiving several emails from clients that I hadn't worked with for a year or even longer saying that all of a sudden the extension that we created is no longer opening up. And to me, if the application appears or the extension appears in your extensions list, but when you click on it, nothing happens, that's always an indication that something is wrong with this code signing. So either the code signing was not done properly or the files were modified. And in my case, I was missing one important argument in this line here uh, to make sure that even after my certificate is expired, the things that were signed during the period when it was valid will still work. So I had a product that I finished 2021, one year ago, and all of a sudden it was not working. But I had used my valid certificate. It was valid one year ago. It signed perfectly. 
but the problem is I forgot a timestamp. If you don't include a timestamp and you simply sign using a P12 file, what's going to happen is it will work for the duration of that certificate, but as soon as that certificate is invalid or expired, it will no longer work. Adding a timestamp, which is a super simple thing we're about to do, is a way of essentially adding a post expiration uh, line of code that lets it work. So if I would have included a timestamp a year ago when I created this example project, then after it expired, it would still work because it has proof that it was timestamped on a certain day. If there's no proof that this certificate and these files were timestamped on a certain day, they are simply expired and no longer able to be used. And that's what I was experiencing. So if we want to add a timestamp, we simply need to provide the flag TSA, I believe it stands for Timestamp Authority, and then we need to provide a URL to a timestamping authority. This is gonna be something like HTTP, and the one that I have found to continually work over the years, I know I haven't been using this over the years, but I tested a whole bunch of websites that are well recommended, and this is the main one that worked, HTTP timestamp.digicert.com. And now when we submit this, not only is it going to sign all of our extension files appropriately, it's also going to add a timestamp saying that, hey, this product was actually verified by a website, a trusted website, that it was uh, validated on this date. So now when I actually run it with this timestamp, I'm going to get the same message you would get previously if it was successful, saying sign successfully. It's also going to create my ZXP file in the location I specified. And now if this expires sometime in the future, one, three, five years, no matter the amount of time, it's going to continue to work because it's time agnostic as it's been timestamped by a trusted website. This is something that I can't believe it took three years to learn, but these are kind of the humbling and important lessons we learn in programming. Uh, it looked like nothing was going wrong, and I had done everything right for so long until all of a sudden uh, everything was wrong, and all the past products I made do probably have to be upgraded if they're not, if they're still in use. So just make sure that when you're signing your files with ZXP Sign CMD, you are including a timestamp. And this was also just a kind of general tutorial on signing your files with ZXP Sign CMD. If you want to see other videos like this, I can maybe make a simple quick tip video on how to verify timestamps and things like that, which is part of the process I used to verify that I had done this wrong all these years. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice a week on the channel. And make sure you check out all the links down below to support us, follow us, and check out what's new. And that's going to do it for this video on how to appropriately sign your extension files using ZXP Sign CMD with the important addition of timestamping to make sure it's working forever. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.